In the last episode, we saw how to get notified of presence messages from users connected to the eJabberD server. Now we're going to look at how we can modify messages as they are sent from user to user. Specifically, we're going to build a module that makes everyone yell all the time. We're going to just start where the last episode left off. Let's add a new module first. So we're going to copy the mod presence demo to, uh, we're going to call it filter packet demo. Open that up. And let's change the name. It is a gen mod behavior. Um, we'll say, starting the filter packet demo. Uh, this is going to go away. It's going to be on filter packet. And then the signature for that, it just gets a packet, but specifically, uh, well, well, we'll just do a packet for now. We'll come back to this. We'll return the packet. Okay. And then rather than adding a hook on set presence hook, we're going to add a hook on filter packet. It's not host specific, it's global. And we're going to do on filter packet. Similarly, on filter packet. Okie doke. And so this is the sort of shell. And then what we're going to do actually, a packet looks like this. It's a three element tuple, it's got a from, a to, and some XML. Okay? And so we'll just write out some info. We'll say, hey, we're filtering this packet right here. And we'll inspect it. OK, so I should be able to compile it. And I've got my little comma T that I use for this. OK, then we'll come over here. And we will start EJRD control IEX live. All right. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect with this guy. And so this is, um, what user is this? I think this is Elixir Sips. And then I have a terminal client called Finch. And so this should, there yeah, we go. I got online. So I can talk to Elixir Sips from Finch and say, hey there. And you can see that we're talking back and forth. Right. And let's go ahead and look at what was happening packet-wise while that all went on. Um, oh, nothing. Right. So I've left something out. Ha, ha, ha. So let's go ahead and here and configure it to use the filter packet demo. OK. We'll start back up. And that exchange will become a little more interesting this time. Um, I'm not sure if this is connected. Nope. So I'll just quit and start back up. And now we're talking, and we'll watch the packets as they go. So, sorry. And so you can see all these packets flowing through, but there are a lot of packets that we don't really care about. Um, they're actually identified by this uh, type. Where is it? So this is XMLL. This is an IQ message, and these are important, but they're not what we care about. What we care about are the messages. So somewhere in here, type chat right so these are these are messages specifically chat messages but they're messages okay so what we'll do is modify our code to only care about those um, so we're gonna restrict our hook to only catch messages so come back over here and we'll make this will handle anything that's not a message okay and then this will say, look, if it's an XMLL record and it's a message, we know it gets its attributes and its children here. So that gets handled here. And so we'll say filtering. Now it's not just a packet. It's a message. And rather than inspecting the packet, we'll inspect the message. Oh, well, we'll inspect the whole packet. That's fine. Um, so we can also do some fun stuff here. We're not going to keep this, but let's go ahead and just get the sub tag. Uh, this is using the XML module that we used last time. Um, so we'll get the body sub tag and we'll inspect it. Okay, so we'll compile that, push it in. And restart. And reconnect and we'll chat over here. We'll say 
And here you can see we're only really getting stuff printed out now. I'll re disconnect, reconnect. But you'll see we're only getting uh, messages printed out that are actually messages. We're not having the flood of packets that go between XMPP and its clients all the time. So now we can sort of just do stuff with messages. So what we want to do is just break them down and upcase them. So if we look at what a message looks like, it's right here. Um, this is an inactive message, that doesn't count. Here's a chat, right? So it's a message, it has some attributes, so these are just the attributes, and then it has some children. So the children are, there's an active tag, and then there's a body tag, okay? So the body tag is all we really want to modify, right? So what we can do is we can just do a map across the children, and in the event that this is a body, we can upcase the XMLC data. And that should do it. And so the way, uh, I, I sort of didn't point out how filters work. So the whole point is, this is just handled as essentially a, a reduction across all of these uh, filter hooks. So whatever we return is expected to be kind of our contribution to filtering this particular packet. So to do that, we can basically do something like this. So let's get some new children. They're going to be the map of the current children. And we get a child inside of each of these functions. Oopsie. Okay. And so now we're going to say, hey, look, let's do a case statement on the child. Uh, the fallback is just return the child as it stands. But if it happens to be a body XML element, has some attributes, and actually I'll just do this. Uh, now nah, we'll just say, we, the ones we've seen don't have any attributes. And so then we'll say, look, XMLC data is some text. And this just maps exactly to what we saw in the sort of inspect statement. Then we just return the same thing for the most part. But this time our XML C data is string.upcase on that text, right? So it's just a transformation. It's very, very much uh, what functional programming feels like. And then down here, instead of just returning packet, we'll return from to basically reconstruct the packet that we captured. But uh, replace it with it, replace its children with our new children. Okay, so we'll go ahead and compile that, and I think this should just work. So we can come over here and restart, and I will reconnect, and I'll do the same thing over here, and we'll start a chat, and I will type in lowercase hello again, and hey, what do you know? This thing is not lowercased. And over here, this is not lowercase. So you can see that our filter is working and uh, it's making everybody yell, which is pretty nice. Anyway, um, so with that little bit of code, we're able to modify the behavior of this particular eJabberty server with respect to the messages that are being sent. Uh, obviously, you could imagine how to do more interesting things here. Uh, for instance, it'd be trivial at this point to control something like Tetris, right? Uh, but this is a pretty simple introduction into packet filtering with eJabberty. See you soon.